Hello everyone and welcome back to the channel. MTG Box Analysis here to take another look at Murders at Karloff Manor. This time we're gonna be taking a look at the Collector Booster Box. This one comes from a different case than the first box, so I guess our odds are equally uh, the same of pulling a serialized card. I fully expect not to see one because there's only 1,750 of them in existence because there's seven cards serialized numbered one to 250. So the odds of pulling one are significantly less than that of Ravnica, Brothers War, or any of the other sets that have contained a serialized card. So with that, let's get into these 12 packs and see what kind of value we can find inside. All right, sliding into pack number one. Always fun opening up collector packs. All right, so we've got ourselves a detective token, followed by a foil borderless gamble special guest coming in. This should be a pretty decent hit for us. Uh, my first special guest of the set. And then we get a Kellen Inquisitive Prodigy, show-stopping surprise coming in from Commander, followed by a Lamplight Phoenix Extended Art with a Pyrotechnic Performer. Then we're gonna see an on-the-job in foil showcase. Get ourselves set up here. Then we got ourselves a makeshift binding, followed by a full art planes with a soul search. Then we've got a perimeter enforcer, followed by a lead pipe. Then we're going to see ourselves a shady informant with a pick your poison, an extract a confession, and a bubble smuggler in the back. All right, rolling into pack number two here. I'm pretty happy with pack number one. Let's see what we get this time. So we got ourselves a Thopter token, followed by an underground mortuary in foil borderless right on top, very nice. And then we're gonna see a forensic gadgeteer in the showcase with a Trouble in Pairs, the number one card from Commander. Then we're gonna see a Treacherous Greed with another underground mortuary from the main set, a Gleaming Gear Drake, a Fanatical Strength, followed by the Full Art Island. Then we're gonna see Case of the Trampled Garden with a Curious Cadaver a Fae Flight, a Crowd Control Warden, and then we're gonna see the chase is on with an ally assailant and an on the job in the back. All right, let's just take a quick peek here and see if we have any additional mythics. No, these are all rare, so I'm gonna kinda of separate the piles so that we can kinda of track the mythics with me um, since I'm doing the new uh, price overlay of the total in the upper left-hand corner. I don't wanna put rares and mythics on the screen. It, it'll be like a video game. All right, so we got ourselves a clue token with a blood splatter analysis. And then we're gonna see Delaney, Streetwise Lookout, coming in in the dossier showcase. Very cool to see that. Um, then we're going to see ourselves an On the Trail, followed by an Illicit Masquerade. Then we got ourselves the Cryptics with a Persuasive Interrogators, followed by a Culvert Ambusher. And behind that, we're going to see the Full Art Mountain with a Magnetic Snuffer coming in. Just an odd card there. Then we got ourselves a No More Lies, Good Uncommon, followed by a Soul Intervention. And then we've got ourselves a Rackish Scoundrel, followed by an Inside Source a deduce, and then we're gonna see ourselves a murder in the back. All right, there we go. Just made a little adjustment to the focus. Should make the cards a little bit easier to see. I think it was just focusing on the backdrop a little bit. All right, so first up, we are going to see a clue token, followed by Krenko Baron uh, of Tin Street. Then we're gonna see an incinerator of the guilty, another mythic for us, with an unshakable tail then we've got a Relive the Past, followed by a Commercial District from the Land Cycle with a Dramatic Accusation, an Unauthorized Exit, uh, followed by a Plains. And then we're going to see ourselves a Chalk Outline, Coerced to Kill. And then we're going to see our Surveillance Monitor with a Nervous Gardener, a Suspicious Detonation, a uh, Hazda Vigilante, and a Basilica Stalker in the back. So I guess we're technically at three mythics if you include our gamble. Let's see if we can get that number up. So we got a Thopter here, followed by Tulsimir Midnight's, Midnight's Light coming in in the showcase with another underground mortuary, number three of the box. And then we're going to see Nelly Borka Impulsive Accuser from uh, Commander with an Axbane Ferox and then a Sharp-Eyed Rookie. And then we're going to see Insidious Roots in the foil showcase. Very cool to see that. With a Demand Answers. And then we're going to see ourselves the island with a reckless detective, call a surprise witness, a convenient target. Then we're going to see a rift burst Helion, gravestone strider with a demand answers. And then we're going to see due diligence in the back. 
All right, so rolling into pack number six here, once we're done with this, we'll be at the halfway point of the box. So far, feels like a pretty good box seeing Delaney and the Gamble. So we've got ourselves a detective with a Niv-Mizzet guild pack here. And then we're going to see Lazav, Wearer of Faces, coming in in the Ravnica City Showcase with an Immortal Obligation, with an Undergrowth Recon, another Mythic and Extended Art. Very cool to see that. Then we're going to see a second Mythic, Urgent Necropsy, from the main set, with a Slice from the Shadows. It doesn't add up. Then we're going to see the Forest with some Rope. Then we're going to see the Fester Leech, an Exit Specialist with a Vengeful Creeper, a Toxin Analysis, an Innocent Bystander. Then we're going to see an Auspicious Arrival in the back. All right, so that officially brings us to the halfway point. If we can do that again, this will be a decent box. All right, so this one kicks off with a Thopter token, followed by a Hedge Maze, another full art base, or a non-basic land. Then we're going to see a Doorkeeper Thrall, followed by a True Identity, and then we've got the Archdruid's Charm, one of the best rares in the set. Very nice to see that. Then we've got a Connecting the Dots, followed by Expose the Culprit, Coerce to Kill, with a Swamp. And then we're going to see a Lumbering Laundry, Tin Street Gossip, Eliminate the Impossible, followed by Slime Against Humanity, the number one common in the set. Very cool. Uh, and then we're going to see an Offender at Large, followed by a Dramatic Accusation, with a Makeshift Binding in the back. All right, let me just take a half a second here and clean up these piles. All right, moving into our next pack. Got ourselves a detective here, followed by uh, Izoni, Center of the Web. And then we're going to see Kaya, Spirits Justice, Mythic uh, Planeswalker coming in. Uh, not the best value, but that's okay. It's another Mythic. Then we got ourselves a final word phantom with a deadly cover-up. Then we're going to see an audience with Trostani and a deduce with the, the chases on, a full art island, flourishing bloomkin. Then we're going to see presumed dead, a forum familiar, a fairy snoop. Then we're going to see galvanize with a cold case cracker and a fanatical strength. All right, so we are down to four packs here. This pack's going to go ahead and start off with another detective token. And behind that, we're going to see a Lamplight Phoenix in foil extended art with another commercial district from the land cycle. A Feather Radiant Arbiter Mythic coming in from Commander. I'm not sure of the value on this one. And then we're going to see ourselves a Coveted Falcon with a Doppelgang. And then we're going to see ourselves a Murder with a Slice from the Shadows, a Full Art Forest, Sample Collector, with a case of the Finched Falcon, Persuasive Interrogators, a Public Thoroughfare, then we're going to see the Dog Walker, with a Novice Inspector, and a Red Herring in the back. All right. So, feeling better about the Mythics in this box. Would like to see a Ley Line. Um, that has shot up significantly uh, in value. I'll cover that in the analysis. So, we kick this one off with a Forensic Gadgeteer, followed by a Sharp-Eyed Rookie, then we're going to see an innocuous researcher, followed by an ill-timed explosion. And then we're going to see ourselves a no witnesses with a convenient target. An insidious roots coming in. Very nice. With a full art mountain. Hard-hitting question. Then we've got a deadly complication with a sanctuary wall. Uh, they went this way. A sanitation automation and a behind the mask with a make your move in the back. Still haven't seen any invisible ink cards, right? They're, uh, they'll be in the first uh, slot. They'll be mythics, and they'll be in the dossier uh, frame. Uh, so we haven't seen any of those. So we got ourselves a clue here with, uh, it's a Wojak investigator, uh, unfortunately not invisible ink. Then we're going to see audience with Trostani, followed by an otherworldly escort from Commander. Then we're going to see ourselves a Steam Core Scholar, a Barb Servitor with a fanatical strength on the job. Then we're going to see the Full Art Forest with a Floatsam and Jetsam, uh, followed by a Breakout with an Essence of Antiquity, Rubber Belt Maverick, a Reasonable Doubt, with an Agency Coroner, a Rubber Belt Braggart in the back. All right. 
Last chance to see some invisible ink or a serialized card. Those are both uh, possible in here. Uh, I think the invisible inks are gonna be less desirable in the end. Um, so we got ourselves a clue here with, ooh, an Ariella of the Law Above. This is where we would see a serialized card if it was. But right behind that, we're gonna see a Hedge Mage with a Tangle uh, Grove Kelp, followed by a Krenko's Buzz Crusher and Kellen Inquisitive Prodigy in regular frame, an Auspicious Arrival, Dramatic Accusation. Then we're gonna see ourselves a Swamp with a Whisper Drinker Vampire, a uh, Cornered Crook, Slimy Dual Leech. Then we're gonna see an Undercover Crocodile with a Slice from the Shadows, Person of Interest, and the Museum Night Watch in the back. So just give me a moment, I'll get everything sorted, organized, priced, inventoried, and we'll go through the MTG box analysis. Let's get things started by reviewing the contents of the box. Using this chart, we can see the cards that we were eligible to see, shaded in gray, the non-foils we actually saw in green, and the foils in orange. In the non-foil space, we ended up seeing 13 showcase, 6 dossier, 5 borderless, and 12 extended art cards from the main set. We also picked up 11 extended art cards from Commander. In the foil space, we saw between 11 and 15 cards for each of the colors of magic in standard frame, along with 11 more foil showcase, 8 dossier, 2 borderless, and 2 extended art from the main set, along with 1 more foil extended art from Commander. Unfortunately, we did not see any invisible ink cards in today's box, but we did see one foil borderless card from the special guest subset. Moving into coverage, in the non-foil space, we saw 36 unique cards from the 123 cards that we were eligible to obtain from the main set. This gave us 29% coverage. From the commander subset, we saw 11 non-foil extended R cards out of a possible 47, giving us 23% coverage. In the foil space, we saw 124 of the 413 cards we were eligible to pull from the main set, giving us 30% coverage. From the commander subset, we saw one extended R card out of a possible 8 in foil, which gave us 13% coverage. Finally, seeing one special guest means that we saw 10% coverage of the murders at Karlov Manor as it introduces 10 new special guests to this multi-set collection. I like to think that the special guests are a new premium version of the list. Pivoting the coverage by rarity, in today's box we saw 73% of the commons and 20% of the uncommons that we were eligible to see in non-foil from the main set. We also picked up 20 of the 69 rares for 30% coverage and 4 non-foil mythics for 17% coverage. In the foil space we saw 60% of the commons and 34% of the uncommons and we picked up 22 foil rares for 16% coverage as well as 1 foil mythic good enough for 2% coverage. From the Commander subset, we saw 10 of the 39 rares for 26% coverage and one non-foil mythic for 13% coverage. In the foil space, we didn't see any rares, but we did pick up one foil mythic for 13% coverage, and in the end, this box contained 52 rares and 8 mythics in 12 packs. Before getting into the value of today's collector booster box, let's take a look at the current value of the set. This chart displays all 460 cards that you can pull from the collector booster packs using non-foil market prices as of February 12th, 2024. Currently, the set contains 17 cards valued over $10. Seven of these come from the main set with the ley line of the guild pack now in the top spot at $27.34 for the extended art version. Another nine cards are Invisible Ink with Delaney Streetwise Lookout holding a market value of $38.49 for the top spot. Finally, the Commander subset even has a hit with Trouble in Pairs currently valued at $19.66. In addition to these 17 high-value cards, the set also contains 22 cards valued between $5 and $10 and 77 cards in the $1 to $5 range. The other 344 cards are valued under a dollar. A full set of all 413 main set cards has a market value of $699 even. The 47 Commander cards have a market value of $60.74, giving the Murders at Karlov Manor's 460 card set a grand total market value of $759.74, which is down about $93 in the last four days. Now let's recap the actual observed value that we saw in today's box, starting off with a look at the non-foils. We ended up seeing two non-foil cards valued over $10. From the main set, we saw Delaney Streetwise Lookout in the Dossier Showcase frame valued at $19.70. And from the Commander subset, we saw Trouble in Paris valued at $19.66. We also picked up four cards in the $5 to $10 range, and six cards valued between $1 and $5. The remaining 32 non-foils in the box are currently valued under a dollar. 
In the foil space, we picked up an additional two cards valued over $10, including the Borderless Underground Mortuary valued at $13.96 and the Borderless Gamble from the Special Guest subset valued at $18.33. We also saw two more cards from the main set valued over $5 and 14 cards valued between $1 and $5. The remaining 115 foils in the box are currently valued under a buck. So how did this box perform? Well, the market price for this box as of February 12, 2024 is $169.29, which is down about $15 in the last four days. The Murders at Karlov Manor Collector Booster Box contains 12 packs, each with 15 cards, allowing you to see 180 cards plus tokens. The current market value of the 12 Extended Art Commander cards that we pulled are valued at $30.89. Our special guest, Gamble, has a market value of $18.33. The 63 commons and 12 full art foil basic lands that we saw are valued at $15.58 combined, and the 45 uncommons are valued at $15.44. Now, the 42 main set rares that we pulled have a combined value of $90.11, and our five mythics are valued at $32.50. Add it all up, and the grand total for this box comes up to be $206.36 in card market value, which is $37.07 over the market price for the box, and means that this box returned 122% of the market price in card value. Now, for those of you interested in cards valued just over $2, the numbers look like this. In total, we saw 24 cards valued over 2 bucks in this box, and they have a current combined value of $157.32, which means that those 24 cards represent 76% of the total box value, but only 93% of the market price for the box. This is an indicator that there's still room for these boxes to drop even further, so keep an eye out for the market value. Thank you so much for watching, and stay tuned as there is more Karlov Manor on the way. Until next time, do something amazing. Get early access to videos, download the analysis for every box open on the channel, and personally DM me, just like these fine people. All by becoming a member of the channel through YouTube or over at mtgboxanalysis.com. You'll find links in the description. Until next time, do something amazing.